How does a PD measurement system look like? We already talked about there are measurement systems and there are detection systems. We're not going to focus on the detection systems now, we're going to focus on the measurement systems. So first of all, I would like to speak about the, the historic version of it and then very quickly we will come to the current version. So in the historic version, we had a partial discharge in our, our pulse. It went into an amplifier, we had an analog filter set and um, ah, we had a diode here that was rectifying the signal and then with the signal we would, uh, we would charge a capacitor and depending on the charge of the capacitor, depending on the voltage over here, we will get a certain reading. So you had a partial discharge coming in, the meter would go up and it would go down. Well, actually the idea was that you need multiple partial discharges, let's say around 100 picocoulomb, right? And they would constantly come in and uh, they would move in the needle to here or move the needle to some other place. So this was PC. The uh, resistor here was there in order to discharge the capacitance. So it was a little bit like a sample and hold. Well, that was an idea, but the problem was you only got one value and you didn't really know what this value stood for. What kind of partial discharge do we have? Is it noise? Is it external PD, internal PD? So you couldn't do much about that. However, the worst part was that this was an analog filter system. And analog filter system have the disadvantage that, I mean, capacitors in there, resistors and other things. The problem was that they would change their characteristic. They would change their behavior over temperature and over time. And because they changed their behavior over temperature, it literally states in the standard that you should have your system running for a while in order to warm it up, or at least in the older versions. And it also stated in the older versions, do not repeat a partial discharge measurement, because very likely you would get something else. Fortunately, we moved away from that and we moved to digital versions and um, let's look at the digital version together. Before we talk about the historic version, let's talk about an intermediate step, the not so historic version. Sorry, I forgot to mention that before. So in the not so historic version, we were using an oscilloscope, you know, old style oscilloscope. And on the oscilloscope, we had one of these Lijazu figures. I can't really pronounce it. And this would represent our voltage. And uh, so one of them would be the positive half wave of our voltage signal. The other one would be the negative half, right? So I have a voltage signal. It's like this, the first bit of the positive half, the negative half, so one of them would be the positive, the other one the negative one. And if we would have partial discharges now, we would actually be able to see them coming up on the screen. So for example, if we have partial discharges around here, which is uh, at around 270 degrees, very often this would be displayed here, which had a huge advantage you were able to see where the partial discharges happened. The oscilloscope usually did not tell you what the picocoulomb value was, but at least you had an idea what kind of partial discharge you have. So now let's move to the, to the, uh, to the current version. Using a digital PD measurement system has a lot of advantages. Let's talk about some of them. So we're having two inputs and one of them would be PD, right? And the other one would be voltage and the majority of our partial discharge tests are usually done with AC voltage, usually somewhere in the area of 50 or 60 hertz. And um, these two signals go into amplifiers. These amplifiers are still analog. However, very often you use rather sophisticated amplifiers. Sometimes people call it military grade and they shouldn't change their behavior so much. And then you have the analog digital converter. And technically the signal only in the input is analog. Afterwards it is digitized which is awesome because we can, can do a lot of cool stuff with that. Um, analog digital converters usually vary in quality. They have different sampling rates and uh, they have different bits. Um, but uh, let's not get into the nitty and gritty here. Let's keep on talking about what a digital system is. Um, the biggest advantage or one of the big advantages is having digital filters. And that is awesome. You can usually change the filters you're using with a mouse click. And especially if you're doing an on-site measurement and you have a lot, of, a lot of noise, it's always awesome to play around a little bit with the filters to figure out where's an area where I have a lot of noise, where's an area where I don't have a lot of noise, and that's quite beneficial. Then you have something, let's call it the BD processor, that brings these two things together, and then the whole thing goes to your human interface device. 
like a computer. Um, there are some companies who have uh, a transmission of the signal in a different way, uh, in a digitized way, um, sometimes not even a galvanic uh, coupled um, uh, system in order for communication. And this has a lot of advantages. Uh, the biggest advantages in the old systems, right, with the analog systems or the, um, or the uh, oscilloscope, um, the idea is that this cable should be sh kept short as possible. Because if you don't do that, and you're having some kind of radio signals here, these could couple into this cable. So the, advantage, uh, the idea would be to keep it as short as possible. However, the majority of people who carry out partial discharge tests don't like it so much to sit right in the high voltage area. So they usually want to sit outside. That makes the cable usually 10, 15, 20 meters long. And sometimes you're having setups where you have a large high voltage area and you have an office above so the people can oversee what is going on and they're sitting there and doing the measurement. So sometimes, I mean, I've been to places where this cable, it's a galvanic cable, it's a, usually a laboratory cable, very often 50 ohm cable, is 50, 70, 100 meters long. And this would act as an antenna. So for every kind of noise that is outside, it would couple in and it could be mistaken for partial discharge or at least make the partial discharge measurement harder. Um, many companies out there who have partial discharge devices and who sell them, they have some kind of communication device here, have come with a communication device here, and this point over here or this, uh, uh, this, this line is usually not uh, subject to noise so much anymore. Furthermore, what's possible sometimes as well is that actually you have the internet in between here. So there are companies who sell something which they usually call monitoring devices, where you monitor a certain, um, a certain object, a certain high voltage equipment, and um, very often you take multiple measurements, not only voltage and partial discharge, sometimes others as well, and uh, you're going to communicate them over the internet, and then the person who is actually checking, you know, and the human interface device, actually checking or making the reading um, of the measurement is sometimes in a different country. So, um, let's not get too much into that. Um, there's one advantage or another advantage with the digital system. If we have the partial discharges and we digitize them and we have a timestamp and we have our voltage and obviously we have a timestamp as well, we are now able to create a different kind of um, representation. We are not only using a PC value or not only using the Lijazu figure, we can do something else. What we can do now is we can draw a diagram like this and um, we can draw our voltage over here. And now, you know, we know from, uh, from, uh, from the oscilloscope, we would actually say, okay, we have a couple of partial discharges here, example given. Um, some systems still allow you to use this kind of uh, uh, display um, method. Uh, it's usually for the old folks, probably for nostalgic reason. However, there are quite a lot of systems who will use the information of the magnitude of discharge and display it here. So let's say I have a partial discharge at 270 degrees. And let's say it is 10 picocoulomb. I'm going to have a dot here. And let's say a couple of milliseconds later or uh, microseconds or in the next period, I have another partial discharge. And let's say it is um, 11 picocoulombs. And it's a little bit later then maybe you display it like this. So obviously this would here be around, around 10 picocoulombs. And um, depending on your preference or depending on the system, this can usually be displayed in logarithmic view or in linear view, but we don't want to get in there right now. There's a video for that. You can find it here. So let's say I have another partial discharge coming and another one and another one and another one and um, and another, and I'm ending up with some kind of a pattern. And there are quite a lot of people out there who are able to look at the patterns and actually distinguish and say, okay, this is a corona, this is a service discharge, it's an internal discharge or something like that. And these are one of the advantages of a digital system. Furthermore, I think I said it already, you can save it, you can play it afterwards. Sometimes you can even change the scale, you can change how you want to look at it. Sometimes you can use further filtering, for example, you record something, you record all of the partial discharges that you were able to detect or you're able to measure, and then you can use some post-processing where you're actually saying, okay, I only want to see a certain kind of partial discharge with this kind of characteristics or this kind of characteristics. 
And especially if you're doing online tests, this helps a lot because an online on-site test or online test, you're having a lot of noise usually, and it's kind of hard to figure out so which signals are actually partial discharge and which signals is noise. And uh, the post processing sometimes uh, in the quiet office rather than on site when it is uh, when it's raining or the weather isn't so good and uh, the customer looks over your shoulder. So very often you do this in the office later on, look at all of that in order to write your report and come up with a conclusion. So that's pretty much it for um, the measurement system. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.